Here's Kate on my powered paraglider, about to go down the runway. She's doing awesome. I just want to run her over here. Finals clear. She's doing great. <laughs> She's so cute. She loves it. Paraglider Kate. I'll get her up in the air on the trike. There you go. Excellent. Woo. You like that? That's fine. Okay, great. quick video um placards are kind of on i might do a couple of them over again just uh you know maybe yeah i, I was just kind of eyeballing it but i think it looks okay and you know this was actually a really simple solution this was um a printer and labels so if you know you just do it black it comes on it kind of goes on there it looks it doesn't look as conspicuous as some of the other ones you know i looked at the punch out ones and i just didn't like that i didn't like the way they they look all bubbly and stuff, but this um, I can see really clearly. EGT limits, max RPM, CHT limits, circuit breakers. I need to make one for Avionics Master over here. But as far as the other ones, if it's placarded, like ignition, obviously, you know, and then your your airspeed and altimeter, I'm not gonna do that. Another thing I did today was I uh, tie wrapped my GPS antenna coaxial cable. So right here is his like secured up there and then up to there. Um, another thing is um, I put the experimental on the other side. I think I took pictures of this, but just to show you, I have that there. And I'm, I think I'm, uh, I'm done. You know, uh, another thing that I was kind of working on today was I, I did the setup for the transponder. So the trig transponder kept, um, not setting for me and I realized what it was was and that thanks to the help of Scott Griffith appreciate you man um just kind of helped me troubleshoot and at first we thought it might have been the way I wired it through the circuit breaker and then through the circuit breaker uh, to the avionics master switch and thinking maybe it needed a hot line but that's not true which is actually great because if you have a hot line on there it's going to trickle draw so draw a trickle charge you know so um this this way everything's programmed into the controller so what I did was, what I was missing was the um, the aircraft, the um, transponder hexadecimal number that's assigned to the aircraft from the FAA when, I'm reg when I registered it. So um, I, I used that number that was off the registration to, um, to uh, put into the transponder. And so now when I turn it on, you can actually see it'll power up and it'll go right to my 1200 squat code isn't that awesome right there standby 1200 so it's pretty cool so it's just uh ready for ground mode ready for uh on altitude encoding so it's all set there so that that master switch whoops sorry that master switch here has uh basically this on it and it has the Haas meter on it so, uh, yeah, pretty excited about that. So that's all set. Radios are all set. Intercom, we worked for the back seat. I'm going to get these uh, headsets all squared away. So what was this? This is what I need to see. Softcom products. Chancellor. Yeah, I need to get a couple muffs for this one. I think I used this at AirNet. <laughs> Actually, I think I did. I used this when I was flying the Barons and the Caravans. This thing's pretty beat up, but it worked good. It actually was better than this one. So uh, what I'll do is probably get my uh, 
quiet comfort my my um, qc 25s going and that'll be the a and r headset and then I'll, I'll use one of these two for the back headset for now until i can get two quiet comforts it's a nice day out here hot it's probably 93 or 4 degrees we got some thunderstorms in the area but this is a great field shout out to kevin Wendelberg, my buddy at Delta, he owns this place and, um, and it's awesome, you know. I think I took videos here before. We got all these like tea hangers and a runway up here. Again, you've you've seen it, but 1,800 feet by 65 foot grass strip. This is 91 GA is the um, airport code. Flying frog, but it's just such such nice land, and the fact that this was pretty hilly back here you know and they 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 put this in in the 70s i need to research some of the history of this field because um it's pretty obscure it's out in the middle of nowhere in moreland which is is relatively quiet they're starting to build more homes here because it's down 85 and as more and more people come down from atlanta this starts to build up but there's a house over there that's a rental home for kevin He's got his main hangar, which is where I did a lot of the work up until now, since I've been here for a couple weeks. But, um, so this is runway 33 here. Runway 33, left-hand pattern, I think, over the highway. The Interstate 85 is over there, heading northbound, so, yep. Some funny videos of people coming in and out of here. Scott Griffith flies out of here and he's he's got a few planes and, oh yeah, there's the thunderstorms. Oh, maybe it'll cool it down. Anyway, um, if I flip this thing around here a little bit. So Scott's got some, uh, some airplanes he flies out of here and one of his buddies has a Challenger. And uh, the Challenger, um, there's a video you can watch where he comes he comes off of uh, off the field here, coming you know down runway one five, and then he turns out, and goes over over those trees. Nice uh, forty five to sixty degree bank turn, about thirty feet off the ground. It's pretty fun. Anyway, um, thanks again for sticking with me. Um, she's almost done. I just have to get um, get the inspection done. And call for the call the FISDO and have an inspector come out. And uh, that's that's about it. And I'll start taking uh, doing some crow hops and get flying. friends. Well, here I am. I, I redid some of my placards um, here at the hangar. And I am awaiting the FAA inspector. Uh, not today, unfortunately. That'd be great. Um, but I called the FAA, uh, emailed them, 
and I submitted a request for the inspection for my airworthiness, my, my special airworthiness certificate. And right now with the COVID-19 situation, uh, the inspectors are pretty much uh, tied up with high priority things. And so I am hoping and praying that somebody can come out here. Uh, you know, it's just obviously me and the inspector and uh, give me an inspection. Have my paperwork out here, wear masks, social distance, whatever we need to do. But in the meantime, uh, I'm hanging out and I'm hoping it's not much, not much time. The second option I could do, <clears throat> the FAA inspector is free. Another option is to get a designated airworthiness representative, a DAR. And um, I've been talking to some guys that are pretty close by me. Uh, but again, the prices are, are 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 pretty high. I mean, they're I guess they're reasonable for that kind of line of work, but uh, it's like five hundred dollars on up, you know. And um, so, if I could get it for free, that'd be great. Um, if I have to pay, uh, I, I I will. I'm not going to let this airplane sit here for months on end. That's just not going to happen. So, um, it's not good for an engine. It's not good for me. You know, I've been building this thing, spending uh, nine ten months building it. I'm ready to fly. So anyway, let me walk you through what I got here. So I put on uh, 727 Golf November, my registration number and number. Um, I, I put this one on again, just to line it up a little bit better, line that one up a little better, put that one on a little straighter. I added avionics master switch and I added the ignition circuit breaker right here, just so we can have them all labeled. And if one pops, you know what it goes to, you know? So uh, yeah. So that's that. Uh, oh yeah, and then the other one is down here. This is pretty cool. So I put my elevator trim into position and lined up. And so that's uh, nose up trim, nose down trim. So that's your takeoff position. And uh, yeah, so those are the placards I added. One more that I do have to add, and I'll show you here in a second once I get it going, <clears throat> is I have to put this placard in view of the passengers. So this is just part of the compliance with um, uh, with, with placarding, I think it's FAR part 45 or something, but passenger warning, this aircraft is amateur built and does not comply with federal safety regulations for standard aircraft. In other words, this is not a standard airworthiness certificate. Uh, for a certified airplane, this is an experimental, which is a special airworthiness certificate. So not to frighten anybody, it doesn't mean it's not safe. It just means it doesn't have the same regulations that a certified aircraft has. Anyway, um, so that's that. Another thing I'm gonna do today is put on uh, my gap seals, actually not that wing, that one has them, uh, gap seals on this side of the aileron. And uh, gap seals are not required. In fact, uh, some people suggest, Tom included, says, hey, you ought to fly your airplane without the gap seals and then put them on to see. But I just figured, you know, from the get-go, I'll go ahead and put them on. And that way um, I, I, I'll have I'll have just probably a little bit of more controllability, or not controllability, but um, smooth flight control surface movement and and um, roll and so on and so forth. So thanks for watching. Uh, by the way, guys, I just wanna throw out a little plug. I am a dealer for Excalibur. So, you know, if anybody watches these videos and they're interested in one, by all, my, by all means, contact me. I'm gonna, I'll put, I'll start putting in the um, description my uh, my business email. And yeah, feel free to reach out to me and, and uh, we can get you started. So anyway, if you're interested, Give me a shout and, um, you know, get, these things are awesome. They're, they're really easy to build. I'll help help you build it. You know, I'm, I'm going to be available for questions as well. So love you guys. Thankful for uh, you checking out my videos. So on the left wing are done and it didn't take long at all. In fact, you know what? I just used one piece of tape across, and I think that was better. I think just using one, I know um, you can watch in the video that where they use a couple pieces uh, to do, and you can do that, that's fine, but if you actually put it, this stuff is, this gap is probably only a couple inches and the tape's a couple inches, but there's enough up on the top and on the bottom that actually one piece works good. It's about eight bucks a roll for the dermal, and eight bucks for 15 feet of this stuff, so it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, expensive as far as that goes i mean it's not too expensive right but if you just use one piece it look actually looks better than the other side and i feel like the coverage is the same so remember you just to spray a little bit of wd-40 in the hinges and then put a little bit of um a 
Vaseline or something like that, petroleum jelly onto the, uh, the hinges themselves so that the tape doesn't stick to them. Watch the video that's on YouTube. I can't remember who it was. I don't know if it was, I can't remember if it was Brad Rip or one of those guys that did it. Prevention, prevention, training.